All right, welcome everybody. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here. Um, so roll call, uh, Emma Cornwell. Hello. <laughs> Linda Kekos. Here. Rodney Kuna. Not here today. Counselor Jeremy Dubbs. Sorry. Sorry, my computer froze up. Oh, well, welcome I'm, back. I'm here. <laughs> Thanks. Kathy Murray. Here. Marilyn Claire. Marilyn, I see your screen. Are you able to unmute yourself for a moment? To check in for roll call? And Rodney. Hello. Hi, Hi Rodney. Nice Welcome. To you. Good to see you. All right, we have a full and exciting meeting today. Um, so we're going to get started with um, approval of the previous minutes from January 9th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Approved. Thanks, Linda. Is there a second? Second. Good. Thanks, Kathy. All right, so then um, a roll call vote. Um, Emma? Yes, mm -hmm. I approve. Linda Kekos? Yes. Rodney Kuna? Mm -hmm. Rodney, do you approve the minutes from January? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he has his captions on. Ronnie, do you have your captions on? Rodney, do you have your captions on? Was he typing? Looks like he's trying to do something. Okay. Hi, Rodney. Can you hear me? I can see you. Do you have your captions on? Rodney, do you have on your captions? Yes. Okay. We can try again, Amy. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Rodney, we're doing a vote to approve the minutes from January. So, Rodney, do you approve the minutes from January? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Councillor Dubs. Yes. Kathy Murray. Yes. Marilyn mm -hmm. Claire. Right. And I um, also approve the minutes from January. Great. Thank you. Um, so notice of the Massachusetts Office on Disability Award for Accessibility Upgrade to City Hall Complex. So mm -hmm, Keith mm -hmm. has an update for us about that. Let's see. Thank you, uh, Amy. So hi, everyone. Uh, last year, as in uh, this time last year, um, we were not awarded this, but we awarded a grant this year for ninety five thousand mm -hmm. dollars to make uh, city hall buildings. So city hall, mm -hmm. the memorial hall, and the mm -hmm. municipal building. So the one we paid the parking, um, and then the senior center to upgrade the service windows. Mm -hmm. Some of them are not accessible. There's some height and some depth requirements that some of them do not meet. Um, except um, automatic door openers, and there's a few door lips which are non-compliant. Um, so we get ninety five thousand to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we just awarded that uh, a couple weeks ago. 
um, which are really exciting. And then, um, so, and to pay for design, we're, um, we, we can use the authorization from last year that you are authorized mm -hmm. to pay the design up to, I estimate about $20,000 um, from the revolving fund. And a check to the revolving fund has like $48,400. Um, and last time I checked in October, it was 44,000. So mm -hmm. within a few months, it dollars wow. And so that means I think the average um, fine is about $150. Um, so people are parking in accessible places and when they're not supposed to be, um, and that money is going. So uh, 20,000 is gonna leverage 96,000. Um, and so that's really cool. Um, that will bring a lot of buildings of the offices in the complex to more accessibility. Hmm. But if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here to answer. That's fantastic. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Thank you, Keith. Thanks for applying to that grant too. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so next is the letter, the recognition letter for Councillor Marianne Labarge. Mm -hmm. um, you all should have received, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna pause. I forgot to do public mm -hmm. comments. That was before, sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, are there public comments? I see there's one person from the public, I believe. Do you have anything you'd like to share or say? This is a good time to do it. Hi, I'd just like to introduce myself. I don't really have a comment, but my name is Caitlin. Um, I'm working for Community Action on the uh, Resilience Hub team. Um, and I'm happy to be here just to sort of be a part of this meeting. I don't have any uh, comments to bring today. Great, thank you for being here and introducing yourself. All right, sorry, back to the letter for Councillor Marianne Labarge. Um, so you all should have received that letter. I hope you had a chance to read it. Um, the idea, yes. oh good, yes, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Rodney. Rodney says, yes, I read it. It was, Marianne, uh, it was a wonderful job. I it's a beer. Yeah. I'm not Amazon. I'm so many, many people. I'll tell you, she's been great for Northampton and has led many, many initiatives. And I want to salute her. Well, yeah. Thank her. Thank you, Rodney. Indeed. Yes. Um so thank you to Emma and Keith for working on that letter um, together. And the plan is if we approve the letter to ask um, city council, if it can be read at a city council meeting with her there, of course. So thank you, Keith, for that idea. I think, um, mm -hmm. I think she'll really like that and appreciate that. Um, so, does it make sense to do a motion and vote um, to approve the letter? Keith? Yeah, I mean, if anyone else has any other edits, you know, um, uh, we can ask, uh, just get some feedback. And then if in part of the motion, I don't know if Jeremy wants to read it at the council meeting, because we'll be there anyways, or if someone else wants to volunteer, um, but as part of the motion, maybe we should just include that. Great, great idea. Thank you. So uh, yeah, um, I'd, I'd be happy to read it. Yeah, like uh, at the at the council meeting. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any edits or um additions for the letter? Anything to add to it? Good. Rodney says it's great. Thanks, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Emma. Um. I was just noticing that it isn't addressed to anyone. Like, I don't know if it should be to Mary Ann, to City Council, to whom it may concern. 
but it's great besides that. <laughs> yes, I, um, I, I love everyone's thoughts on this. Um, we left it in the third person with the idea that it will be read in front of her to city council at, at a city council meeting. Um, so rather than at it being addressed to her, um, it's more of a recognition letter. Does that make sense? So, um, I mean, we could we could have two versions and mail her a copy that's addressed to her, um, yeah. or we could have this that that um, that uh, Councillor Dubs reads at a mm -hmm. city council meeting. Thoughts on that? Oh, Rodney says that would be great to to read it at city council. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Same okay. Set. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Emma, what do you what do you think after? Oh, I I love the idea of doing both of sending her like a one that she can mm -hmm. keep um yep. also mm -hmm. reading it great i like that anyone else like that i, I agree i think it's a great yeah. idea okay so let's um i'm going to mm -hmm. ask if there's a motion to read the letter in front of city council read by councillor dubs and to mail Councillor Labarge, a version of it, so she has it to keep. Hmm. All, all you have to do is say that. Uh, Rodney says, I make a motion. I'll second that. All right, thank you. So I'll do a quick roll, roll call. Um, Emma? Yes. Linda? Yes. Rodney? Hmm. Rodney? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay. Thumbs up. Councillor Dubs? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Marilyn? I saw your, your mouth move, Marilyn. I didn't hear you, but I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> um, great. Fantastic. So thank you all for that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, next up is the discussion of the screening of the movie Go On, Bre Be Brave. Mm -hmm. So I have information to bring back to the Disability Commission for that. Um, so as we talked mm -hmm. about uh, last meeting, um, mm -hmm. there are several organizations that are working together locally to put on a showing of this documentary called Go On, Be Brave. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's a documentary about a woman who was diagnosed with ALS in her early 30s and then had the goal of cycling a marathon in all 50 states. Um, so that's what the documentary is about. So some of us met, it's uh, spearheaded by Karen Foster with All Out Adventures. Um, sorry, I'm gonna try my memory here. Um, Mass Bikes is involved, Northampton Cycling Club, um, All Bodies on Bikes, and Northampton Neighbors. Um, and then us, if we want to, oh, sorry, and Gardens of Northampton Trails. So it's a it's a nice group of of local folks. So um, so I'm going to give you just a few details, and then we can vote on if we want to be part of uh, this effort. So the screening will be at the Center for the Arts on Holly Street, Friday, April fifth. Uh, the Sunday went before uh, she could snag it, so it's. Um, Mm -hmm. Starts at 5.15, but 5.15 to 6 is for mingling and some light food. And 6 o'clock will be introducing the sponsors and then starting the documentary. Mm -hmm. And then 
8 to 8.30 will be a break. And then a, so we're still trying to figure out a discussion or question answer mm -hmm. or more mingling. So about 5.15 to 8.30. But of course, you the movie itself is 6 to uh, roughly 6 to 8. So you don't have to you know stay that whole time. Um, I'm going to go over and check out the accessibility of the whole space so that that information can be on the flyer. Um, some of you may have already been in that space and can fill me in separately. That would be great. Um, but so I'll look for, I know they have accessible parking, but um, we're going to try to do captions, of course, and if uh, sound amplification. Yeah. And so just looking at the flow of the whole space for accessibility as well. Um, there's going to be a bike valet service for those of us who want to cycle there and have just be able to cycle up and leave your your mm -hmm. bike or or your trike um, so someone else can park it and then keep it safe during the film. Um, the admission will be on a sliding scale from zero to two times the estimated cost per person. The groups that are able to put in money and the, they're not expecting the Disability Commission to be one of those. So knowing that we're a government entity, that's kind of not on the, we're not responsible that way, but the other groups will put in money to cover the costs and hopefully mm -hmm. costs will be covered, but if not, that's okay. Um, if for whatever reason money goes over, then those that put in money will just split the mm -hmm. probably very small amount of proceeds. Um, we can offer, they said, simultaneous remote screening for those who can't gather in person to, to watch it. Although they say we are not allowed to um, actively advertise that. So, but we can share that with people who inquire about it. Um, and then the next organizational meeting is Tuesday, March 5th at 9.15, if anyone else is interested. So any questions before we vote on whether we want to be, oh, sorry, I guess one thing is we probably will be able to have a table there. So if any of us wants to go and um, and represent the Disability Commission, or if we want to have any flyers out to advertise our meeting, what we do, um, mm -hmm. we can do that. So questions before we mm -hmm. decide. Um, I guess I had one question about, um... You were saying how we can't advertise that it's available mm -hmm. to watch. Is that like to watch on Zoom kind of like that? Is that what you're saying? Or is it is like a Zoom type thing or? Yeah, this is, sorry, this is not me finding out this information directly. This is through someone else. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm just curious. So yeah, so they contacted the organization that um, is behind putting out the mm -hmm. Uh, the movie and uh, so this was the information that they got back so that we could simultaneously screen it remotely so it would be at the same time as our showing gotcha I see so I saying. assume I, I you know I don't know if it's through zoom I don't know what the platform is how the, I gotcha it, the technicality of it I'm not clear on yet <laughs> okay cool um, yeah and I'm not sure why they have the caveat of not advertising that ahead of time. Maybe they're worried people wouldn't show up in person then. Mm -hmm. um, even I if see. they heard, I, that's my guess. I don't. I don't know. I guess my question. I guess my question would be um, if we're allowed to let people know that there's an option for that. You know what I mean? I guess like, or there's an option to request it. You know what I mean? Because like, I guess the uh, the reason I'm asking is because when we had our uh, Crip Camp screening. They were, I, I ended up like hearing from a bunch of people afterwards that they were upset that they weren't able to attend it virtually. So right. I feel like there would be people that would be concerned, you know, that there would are people in the public that would want to know about that. You know what I mean? If it was, so maybe it'd be cool to find out how we could let them know. 
without advertising. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, I will ask about that. And um, I'm hoping on the flyer, mm -hmm. we can put something like, uh, please contact us for any questions or accommodations. Yeah, um, that's perfect. Yeah, that's basically what it's, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so kind of encouraging people to reach out with questions. Mm -hmm. And then we can say, oh, yes, actually, we can screen it simultaneously. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I will, I will follow up about that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, any other uh, thoughts or questions or, hey, this is great. No, this is horrible. I don't want to be involved. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So is there... I guess, is there a motion to have the Disability Commission mm -hmm. be a, um, mm -hmm. a co-sponsor without money? I don't have another word, sorry, on the top of my tongue, but a, a co-sponsor, co-organizer of uh, Go On, Be Brave mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. spring. I'll make a motion. Thanks, Jim. And a second? A second. Oh. Thanks, Linda. Um, okay, so a uh, roll call, Emma? Yes. Linda? Yes. Uh, Rodney? Rodney? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Dubs? Yes. <laughs> Kathy? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Okay. Thank you all for doing that. And if anyone else, is anyone else interested in being involved in the planning? We're going to the next planning meeting. It's March. But if not, I'm happy to do it, but I'm just offering. Um, oh, March. sorry. I, did, I didn't mean to say, I, I'll go to that. Yeah. I didn't mean to say to ignore that, uh, but I would, I'd be interested in that. Okay. Awesome. I will send yeah. you an email, Jeremy. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Amy, I don't need to be part of the planning meeting, but just uh, keep me in the loop on um, any um, just conf confirmation of the times and stuff, because I'll want to create um, an event or something and put it out. So if a quorum of people from the Disability Commission go, we need to have make sure that it's a public event. Um, so I'll just need to make sure that it's created like that. So. Thank you for Other, thinking. Otherwise, it'd be really awkward to go there and not have any yep. conversations. Yes. Thank you very much for thinking of that. All right. So next up is the um, Disability Commission representative for the Human Rights Commission. Um, Keith sent an mm -hmm. email and included information about this on the 15th of February. And I'm happy to read that if anyone would like a review of uh, the the what the Human Rights Commission does and um, the responsibilities involved. Um, we had talked last time, I believe, Linda, you were considering if this was something you were willing oh. to do. No. <laughs> no, you would not want to do no. it. No. I read the whole thing. Great. Well, thank you for thinking about it. Um, is there anyone else who would consider being a representative from the Disability Commission mm -hmm. on the Human Rights Commission? I would do it, but I don't think I'm allowed to because I'm already on two other commissions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, tricky. I have a meeting right at the same time um, on that exact Wednesday each month, so. Is, is it something that we could table until we have more members? I think that's a great idea. Anyone else thoughts on that? Mm -mm. Okay, so let's let's come back to that um, maybe in a month or two. Is that okay, Keith? Maybe two months? Okay, 
Thank you. All right, so moving on, the variance amendment request for Talbot House. Um, Keith, is there any way to do a screen share? Mm -hmm. I know this is putting you on the spot, uh, but just to pull up the summary, the page three, so that we can look at that together. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. um, and please anyone jump in with thoughts on this. I was <laughs> thinking we could collectively give our thoughts and our input about this um request variance variance amendment request similar to what we did yeah i think down a little bit it's on page three and the blue yeah the blue text that's great um let me see get my you all see that okay should it blow it up a little more um Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you all don't mm -hmm. mind, I'll just, is it okay if I just read it real quickly for everybody? The uh, yes, please. Yeah, please. Pertinent parts. I know I have to to push my computer back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. On May 22nd, 2023, the applicant requested that closet door hardware in the upper three story bedrooms be allowed to remain as is knobs at 32 inches from the floor. No cost information was provided at that time. The first amendment no, amended notice of action on J June 7th, 2023 did not include a response to the request. As part of the construction contract alternate, mm -hmm. Keter Corporation provided cost information on January 5th, 2024, as follows. 65 closet doors on floors two, three, and four. The cost each for all new hardware, $1,950 plus O&P at 10%. Campus standard specification to match entry room door hardware for a total cost of one hundred and thirty nine thousand four hundred twenty five. The applicant would like to request relief from being required to install new lever handle door hardware in non accessible bedroom closets on the upper three stories. So that, that is the ask. All lower level and first floor door hardware, including closets in bedrooms not designated to be accessible will comply with 26.1. All entry doors to sleeping rooms at every level will comply with 26.1. Um, in the event that a student in their own selected bedroom on an upper story of Talbot House were to request an accommodation to replace their closet door hardware due to fine motor control or other related disabilities, mm -hmm. Smith College will satisfy such a request. So that is um, what they're asking. So that's the, you know, the the essence was that was that one sentence. So it's on floors two, three, and four that they not install the new lever hand lever handle door hardware in non-accessible bedroom closets. So um thoughts on that. So I was thinking we could collect mm -hmm. our thoughts and input as we did with the last, um, I think that was just last month, the last uh, variance request. And then, does that make sense, Keith? And then um, if you don't mind writing up and then yeah, we can that's, send it off. That's fine. Okay. So who has thoughts on that? I'm, um, I feel like it's a pretty straightforward ask. Um, and I personally feel ready to just support it because 
floors two, three, and four aren't accessible mm -hmm. anyways. Um, and so I feel like a mm -hmm. student with mobility needs and like a need for a um that kind of door opener uh would be on one of the accessible floors which I think is just the first floor maybe mm -hmm. the basement but mm -hmm. yeah yeah thanks mm -hmm. Emma Rodney did I see your hand up uh, Rodney go ahead, go ahead I have a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Who is going to pay for the doorknob? Who is going to pay for the doorknobs? Who is going to pay for you? I think Smith College should pay for you. I think Smith College should pay for them. It it would be Smith College, yes. Yeah. I have Okay. Okay. Jeremy? Um, I was just gonna basically say that I agreed with what Emma said and um also just to also note that I thought that it was good that um in, in the um variance request it mentions that if, if someone did want to use the upper floor, if someone with a disability did want to, you know, if they felt that, that they wanted to live on the or be on the second, third or fourth floor, they could make a request. So I think that that is a good caveat in there. Thank you. Other other thoughts, or even if you agree, mm -hmm. it's great to hear your your agreement, so that the ideas are coming from. I agree with Emma and Jeremy. Thanks, Linda. I also agree. Awesome. Thanks, Marilyn. I agree. Also, I hope that Smith College will make it known to people that mm -hmm. if they feel that they need to have a leg or door handle that they can request it. That's that's a great point, Kathy. I'd love I'd love that point to be included in our um feedback, our thoughts for them. All right, thank you. So is that um is that an okay request, Keith, to for you to type that those thoughts up and yeah. then we um, if like you all did. want to make the motion and make it official, um, yeah, that'd be great. Um, we could do that. I hesitate because I don't want to set the precedent. Um, we had talked about when a variance request comes to us that we not vote on it until the next time because they're often complicated um, and require us to do some thinking and research and talking to other people and investigating. Um, this feels different. So um, is, as long as, you know, it, we're all on the same page that this isn't our norm, that when other variants requests come to us that we um, listen and we vote on it the next time if that's appropriate does that sound okay emma vice chair yeah yeah okay okay all right so then uh so then can we do a motion and a second to support the um variance request for talbot house v23-054 a motion to support it Thank I'll you. second that. All right, thank you. So a roll call, Emma? Yes. Linda? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Yes. Counselor Dubs? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you all. All right sidewalks <laughs> we are moving right along all right i'm sorry i need to get some notes so emma and i had a fantastic meeting last week with the director of dpw 
Donna Lascalia. Um, we, um, yeah, we had a great conversation and a great meeting. It was probably what, like an hour and 15 minutes or something. Um, and we covered a lot of ground and we both took notes to try to take notes while we're also talking and asking um, questions from the Disability Commission. Um, and so I wrote up some things to share with you. So I'm sorry, it's gonna be not as conversational uh, because I didn't wanna forget anything. And um, 437, I think we're okay with time. If you will um, humor me, I'm gonna share some of just, I mean, a smidgy of kind of bigger picture thinking of the, the history and what some of the factors are that DPW has to contend mm -hmm. with as they're figuring out sidewalks. Um, it was educational for me to hear what uh, the director had to say about that. And it helped me kind of um, mm -hmm. think about, uh, you know, and frame and understand some of the pressures. So, um, yeah, so I just want to share that with you briefly and then go into information that she shared with us that hopefully answers all of our questions. Okay. So when streets were being laid out in the 1950s or even earlier, a street would be figured out and then the pedestrian paths next to them were put in as almost an afterthought. So whatever small width was left was used for that path. Those paths are now the base for our sidewalks that we have today. So now we have regulations that require minimum widths of 60 inches and sometimes 48 mm -hmm. inches are allowed for, for small sections. So that's called, it's called laying the way when they figure out the all the widths involved and figuring out where the street's going and the curb and the sidewalk. So when laying the way today, there are of course required widths for vehicle lanes, for the strips in the middle of the road, for the curbs, for the fog lanes, and then what is remaining is the width for the sidewalks. So the total width will dictate if a sidewalk is possible on one side of the street or on both sides of the street. And of course, there are also electric poles to consider. Um, the city could insist on sidewalks on both sides of a street that's being redone, but that would entail taking people's property by eminent domain. Um, so over the past several years, the city has focused on the construction of pretty deplorable roadways. While repaving those roads, though the adjacent sidewalks were done due to cost considerations. Mm -hmm. so it made sense to do those sidewalks when the roads were being done. Um, because it costs significantly less to redo a sidewalk when the road is already mm -hmm. torn up. So with those major repaving projects done, the city is now able to focus on the sidewalks in greatest need of replacement mm -hmm. or repair. Currently, the city allots $200,000 per year for sidewalks. Uh, the figure was lower in the past, so now that's what they're working with. So there's no clear number for how much it costs to repair or replace a sidewalk. It's of course like anything else, once you scratch the surface, it gets really complicated. So there are multiple factors that determine the end cost of a sidewalk and those factors vary. For example, the material of the sidewalk matters. Um, so asphalt is half the cost of concrete. Um, and the proximity to other current projects also greatly affects the cost. So once you have heavy equipment in one area, it's much cheaper 
for that company to do projects in that vicinity versus getting all that major heavy equipment across town to do another project across town. Um, so that's some of the, some of the, yeah, some of the factors that she shared with us. Um, the super exciting news mm -hmm. is that DPW is redoing several long stretches of sidewalks this summer. <clears throat> so they're doing Main Street from in Florence from Park Street to the Look Park Roundabout. They're redoing Chestnut Street. And I'm sorry, our friend Jacob Drew is not here tonight. Um, so they're redoing that sidewalk that he has been advocating so much for. Um, uh, parts of North Maple and North Elm. Um, so, so really thank you to to Jacob for his advocacy for for making that street um, that street sidewalk okay. get redone this year. Um, so for all of us to know, every December, the DPW director goes before city council to ask for authorization of the plan for the following year. Um, and then more details get talked about in the transportation and parking committee. Um, and we're, of course, anyone, the public is welcome to attend mm -hmm. those meetings to learn about the plan for the coming year. So we did ask about if mm -hmm. there is a sidewalk that is in bad condition and needs repair, how to report that, like what's the best way to report it. So multiple okay. ways to do that. There is a form on the city's website. So you can fill out a work order or you can call DPW to report it or you can email DPW to ask for repair. Um, I can put that in the chat, but it's dpwinfo at northamptonma.gov is their email address. One thing that uh, is important mm -hmm. for us to know and for us to tell our friends and family and anyone we talk to, um, something that's really uh, powerful for us to do is to contact our city councilor to encourage our city councilor to at least, you know, at minimum maintain that funding for sidewalks every year. Um, so when our city councilors hear from constituents, then, you know, that that message gets translated loudly and clearly. So that is something we can all be doing. Uh, Emma, other, anything else? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I'll just say that um, Donna Lascalia um, seemed to imply that DPW is like very responsive to temporary fixes, like um for like particularly bad mm -hmm. sidewalk. If you kind of make that known to them, that they can at least come in with some kind of um temporary fix or like repaving fixing a crack or something like that until they repave the whole thing. So that was encouraging to me. Yes. And and smaller projects are easier, of course, to fix and will probably get attended to more quickly. Um, but she was quite encouraging. Um, for people to report those difficulties in sidewalks. Yeah. Thanks, Emma. Yeah, thanks, Amy, for collecting all of that. <laughs> um, questions <laughs> that uh, Emma and I can follow up with, and she's happy to come to a meeting. She's, you know, she's very, present and generous uh with her time and so if we ever wanted her 
to come, she's more than welcome to. Um, mm -hmm. Emma and I could also follow up with by email with her with any questions, follow up questions that we have as a group. So anything that didn't get covered or mm -hmm. thoughts left. Um, I guess I could just add a th one. I just wanted to add one little uh, exciting project that I'm working on um, in the city council, which I think relate which relates to this conversation. Um, I am because you were you were just talking you were talking about how you would like to let like let the city council's councilors mm -hmm. know about this information. And one idea I had recently was to uh, create a resolution for um, to present to the city council. Uh, a resolution in support of the Northampton ADA transition plan, which is uh, like basically it's already it's already policy in Northampton. But since I've been city councilor, I've noticed that a lot of people aren't aren't aware of it, especially the other councilors. They they weren't aware of the ADA transition plan, which has a lot of the information in it about sidewalks and working with the DP, DPW and you know, and so I feel like. Uh, having a resolution that kind of educates the other counselors mm -hmm. on the on the plan and getting us all like on the same page uh, i think that would be a, a good way to uh to get to get the city council involved you know with, with what we're doing and i was also wondering if if the somehow the disability commission could be involved i don't know how yet but if maybe amy or emma if you wanted to come to a city council meeting like when when the resolution is being presented you could even like come there too uh, make a statement or something like that, you know, or something, you know, we, we can talk about it, but, but I, it's just something I've been excited to work on. Absolutely. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And Rachel Maiori is also working on it with me. She's helping me a lot with it. So yeah, I think it's going to be good. Yeah. 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 And I'd be happy to attend when the time is right for that. So Awesome. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know. Hey, Jeremy, can you just, um, uh, the resolution is to what about the transition plan? To support it? it? Support, to support it. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just basically because I've noticed that people just kind of aren't aware of it. So it's more of just like an educational <laughs> resolution, you know, to get us all aware of it, you know, so that we can have just, you know, have a conversation about it. Yeah. yeah. Thank cool. you. Other, other comments or questions about the meeting with the DPW director or sidewalks? <laughs> all right. Thank you all. So um, number nine is is really kind of two or maybe even three separate things. Um, and so I, did, I just wanted to tease out that the second part of number nine is uh, the public service announcement, which is the PSA that um, Jeremy and Keith had started working on last winter um, to encourage people to shovel their sidewalks after a storm. So the the bigger subject is snow removal from the sidewalks. Um, and so the, what we, so one subject is shoveling, uh, you know, snow removal from sidewalks mm -hmm. and, and connected to that is the PSA. And so I'm wondering if um, we want to pick up the PSA again and maybe get some technical support in producing it, make, getting it to finish product um, so that we can have it ready for next fall, late, you know, late fall going into winter to run next winter. Any, what, are, what are thoughts on, on that to put energy behind the PSA? Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, like I think we 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 had we started working on it and um mm -hmm. I'd be willing to help help in any way that I can. We could um we could we could also like write it write it together as a commission like what do we want 
what do we want the announcement to say exactly? We could work on that together. Great. Anyone else excited to help bring it to fruition? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously I would be so excited to do that. I'm wondering if we need a little bit more like technical skill for the video part of it um and how or if it's like just um if it's just audio like mm -hmm. to create a script and then figure out how to like disperse that to the people who can actually disperse that <laughs> to the study and if it's visual and audio sort of I guess we need some more like video filming and editing <laughs> skills and um how do we pay for that are we gonna can we try to use the revolving fund mm -hmm. um I'm sorry, these are just like thoughts that I'm having, not really a question. No, that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I think those are important thoughts. Um, I wonder if like Northampton Media or Northampton Open Media might be interested in helping with that in some way. Because I know they have like video equipment there that you can like rent and things like that. So we might be able to do that. And they might there might be somebody willing to help us actually do it, you know, to make it, you know, somebody with skills on how to edit and things like that. And I don't know. I feel like um, it's possible we could figure out how to do it for free. Even though, I mean, if it does cost money, I think that, you know, that we should try to figure that out. But I also feel like there might be somebody that we know, because I, I know a lot of people that have, have like worked in video, so mm -hmm. I might be able to find somebody that would be willing to edit it for us for free, maybe. Okay. But also, yeah, maybe, I think Northampton Open Media might be the good a good first place to, to look, though, to ask. Okay. How about I'll reach out to them and um just see what is possible um you know run the idea by them and see what yeah you know, see what they say this is way outside my realm so <laughs> uh, well uh they help out with like city council meetings so i imagine like they would okay. they might help out with this sort of thing also okay all right i will yeah i will gather information and can bring it back to next month's meeting yeah oh. Keith. Amy, uh, when I was when I started last year, I uh, also way beyond my technical feasibility, and I thought it was something I could learn on the fly. It is not, um, <laughs> but I did download a bunch of stock video of snow. Okay. So um, I have a whole folder of just stock video of snow in different formats. So I think part of the problem was finding the video, and we got a few sections uh, of Jeremy in the snow but um, this is like could be Northampton could be Boston you don't really know um, okay. but it's available for free mm -hmm. and not copyrighted uh, so if we do end up going we need video I can share that easily um, and then I can also share the uh, text that I started but um, it might be just a good starting point great fantastic thank you Other thoughts, questions on the PSA? Um, sorry. <laughs> I I think when this first came up like a year mm -hmm. ago or a year ago, um, the PSA specifically. <laughs> I had wondered if we could like take East Hampton made one and I was wondering if we could just use theirs basically um and I think I can't totally remember Keith I think you reached out to somebody to ask if we could do that and never heard back I remember reaching out, but I, I don't recall the conclusion of that, but I can check. 
but I, I just bring it up as like maybe a quicker and less expensive route. <laughs> yep. Share, share that they maybe they can share the wealth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> share the PSA. That's great. Thanks. Um, anyone else? All right. Mm -hmm. I am going to suggest that we talk about the shoveling snow removal from sidewalks at our next meeting. That's all right. Um, mm -hmm. That is starting another big conversation. Um, so would that be okay, Keith, to put that on next month's mm -hmm. agenda? Yeah, I think, I mean, go for okay. it. Sorry? Yeah, I think that's totally fine. Okay, great. Is that okay with you too, Emma? Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so other business not anticipated. I just have an announcement. Yes, Keith. Um, so I'm gonna send this information out to you all um, anyways, so just wanna let you know. On Tuesday, the 27th at 2 p.m., um, uh, Fort Klein in my office, he's hosting a meeting at College Church um, in Pomeroy Terrace to discuss the terrace trails. Um, we got a grant to make them accessible. So we're going to have a meeting there in person. If the, I mean, the trails are not accessible, but we want to maybe we can. Um, the meeting will be inside um, and then we'll discuss the grant and then uh, we will have another meeting uh, probably at the Disability Commission court will come and talk about it. Um, so if you can't make that on the 27th at 2 p.m., <laughs> then we can have a discussion at one of the next Disability Commission meetings. But we're going to make the terrace trails um, behind Palmer Terrace more accessible the grant fantastic thank you yeah linda yeah last uh two weeks ago i took the trail on old wilson road it's really rough is anybody is the town going to fix that or work on it this spring um i don't know that's the old pine grove golf course yes there are plans for that so oh, yeah, good. that's in process, but I'm not managing that project, so I, I can't tell you off the top of my head where it's at. Okay. Um, Linda, if you want um more information, I'd be happy to email with you outside of the meeting and get you can get my email from Keith. Okay. Um because mm. I've I've been out there uh with Tom and Nice from planning and can you know, fill you in on, on what I know. But the city has um, got a grant to put in an accessible trail out there, but I can kind of- Who knows through. when? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the water, they're still waiting for- Yeah, it is terrible, yeah. yeah. Um, but happy to sh go into more details um, anytime. Okay. Um, and happy to share more details uh, during a commission meeting at some point if other people mm -hmm. have information as well. Um, other, other business not anticipated? Mm -hmm. Jeremy? Um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to update um, everyone on the variance request that we discussed. I think it was last, was it last month uh, when we discussed 41 strong Ave? Well, time flies. Um, or I mean, you know, like it seems like it was a long time ago, but um, uh, sorry, but anyway, the, the the update is that is that the the architectural access board has denied their variance request. They listened to, they listened to our advice, and they denied the variance request mm -hmm. for Forty One Strong Ave. So I wanted to share the good news with everybody, and so and so they can they can appeal. That is it is true that they can 
appeal that. Um, but for now, they are legally ordered to um, not be allowed to be open until um, they become compliant with ADA. Right. So, yeah, I don't know when that'll be enforced, but that's 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 the update, though. So, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, and, you t to all of us. Yeah. Yeah, to all of us. And but thank you for your work with this, Jeremy. This wouldn't have happened without your perseverance and yeah, your advocacy following up. It's my pleasure. <laughs> well thank done. <you>. Thanks. <laughs> it's quite a bit of energy and time to Indeed, yeah. Oh, and if anybody actually wants to see the decision, I can send it to you. I can email it, like the actual document. <clears throat> Just let me know and I can send it, send it along. That's great. Maybe um, you could send it to Keith and Keith, would you be able to send it out to everybody? Awesome. Yeah, that sounds good. It's monumental. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for letting us know. Of course, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to do a meeting up on the whatever. Oh yeah. Third and floor. That, actually, you know, when I when I testified at the at the hearing for the AAB, that's what I said. I said um to the owner of the building, I said, when your building becomes accessible again, I'll have a drink with you in your restaurant. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he was very happy. I don't think he was very happy about what I said though. <laughs> well, <laughs> We can all go toast. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Making the city more accessible bit by bit. Exactly. Yeah. One building at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Other business not anticipated? Announcements? Great. So a motion to adjourn if anyone would like to do that. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thanks, I'll Jeff. second it. Right. Second. Rodney seconds it. Thank you, Rodney. Okay. Thank you all so much for your presence and participation and appreciate you all being here. And have Thanks, a everybody. Good evening.